Colon cancer represents one of the uh, four major cancers uh, in this country. When you include colon, breast, lung, and prostate cancer, they make up about 700,000 new cancers per year. We know a lot more about the genetic basis of colorectal cancer than we did 20 years ago. We understand that there are familial types of cancers that are passed from generation to generation. We also understand that represents a relative minority of the colorectal cancers that physicians see, um, representing only about five to at most 10% of the cancers, probably less. Colorectal cancer, uh, generally speaking, compared to some of the more virulent cancers, remains a curable cancer. What we found was the best strategy was a dedicated nurse that would work with the physicians to see and screen patients, allow them to be able to be diagnosed or even evaluated prior to any visit, get all the appropriate tests before they're ever seen, have the pathology reviewed, have the quality of the outside studies reviewed, so that on the day of clinic, you can see three doctors, one from surgical oncology, medical oncology, and radiation oncology, if appropriate, and then have all the information available to create a comprehensive treatment plan at the end of the day. The so treatment strategies are a little bit different, but we're gonna divide it into two groups, one for colon cancer and one for rectal cancer. Colon cancer, the primary treatment is surgical resection, followed by chemotherapy if there are lymph nodes that have cancer spread to them. The uh, most promising surgical therapy is laparoscopic colectomy, where we free up the colon remove the colon and the tumor through relatively small incisions to try to improve the patient's post-operative recovery. When people decide they have a problem, their doctor says they have a colon cancer or rectal cancer, the first reaction is, can you cut it out and when can I get it done? That isn't always the most appropriate thing. In, most, sometimes, in some situations, uh, it's giving chemo and radiation therapy first as opposed to just getting rushing right off to an operation. In fact, we spend a lot of our time educating patients and families that it isn't an emergency. The role of radiation therapy is very small uh, for colon cancer and would be only in very high risk situations where the colon cancer itself has invaded other structures in that region or perhaps the edges were not particularly clear. In general, radiation therapy is not indicated for colon cancer. The treatment for rectal cancer involves three separate entities, surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. It used to be that everybody underwent surgical resection, followed by radiation and then chemotherapy. A new randomized trial from Europe showed that giving chemo and radiation therapy first reduced the chance of pelvic recurrence and actually improved the chance that you wouldn't have a colostomy. So it served two functions, a greater chance for cancer cure and a greater chance for functional preservation. The role of chemotherapy really has come a long way for colorectal cancer. For colon cancer, the response rates to chemotherapy used to be somewhere in the 20% range, where now with a, a newer four-drug regimen, the response rates are approaching 50%. And so the chance of improving people's survival goes up significantly compared to years ago when there was just an operation alone. So we do believe that the partnership between surgical intervention and medical oncology giving chemotherapy has really improved the survival of patients undergoing chemotherapy for colon cancer. It's our mission that patients, when they get a diagnosis of colon or rectal cancer, is that they can make one phone call and get into the UAB cancer care system, be able to have a nurse coordinator get that phone call and say, we have a treatment plan for you, and no, you don't need an operation tomorrow, as sometimes is told in other places. What you need is to get all the appropriate testing and staging, see the surgeon, the medical oncologist, and the radiation oncologist all in the same day, and at the end of the day, have a complete treatment plan ready for you that you can act on that following day. The most important thing is that you get to the right people the first time and get treated correctly the first time. That's patient-friendly approach.